welcome back to my channel. My name is Sim Kern, pronouns they them. I'm an author, a booktuber, a journalist, all kinds of things. And today I'm gonna to be talking about my February TBR. So for January, I read four books, which is two more books than I usually read in a month. And this month I have six books that I'm going to try, no, I have seven books that I'm gonna to try to read. And that's really audacious for me, but I'm feeling pumped. I um, have given myself carpal tunnel playing video games. So I can't play video games anymore. I need to like chill out. Um, so I'm reading a lot more as a result. And I'm hoping that this can be a good thing and I'll just read a whole bunch of books this month. Four of the books are for Black History Month slash Blackathon, uh, which I'm participating in, but not completely. And the other three are books I have to read for other reasons. So without further ado, let's get into it. I am going to be joining Team Sci-Fi Fantasy for Blackathon, which is being hosted by Starla Enjoys, whose channel is really amazing and you should check it out. The Blackathon as a whole is being hosted by um, Bowties and Books. The group read is what I'm definitely reading for Team Sci-Fi Fantasy, and that's Escaping Exodus by Nikki Drayden. I'm really excited that Nikki Drayden is a somewhat local author. She's a Texan. She lives in Austin. She was actually the keynote speaker at Armadillo Con, which I went to this year, although she was virtual, so I didn't get to meet her. But hopefully I will someday. Um, so this book sounds super cool. It's about uh, humans surviving in space inside of giant space beasts, but they're there's something wrong with the space beast. They're being destroyed. I'm thinking it might be a cli-fi book, um, like parallels to overconsumption of resources. Um, so I'm really excited about this one, uh, both in terms of like my interest in climate fiction. It sounds like really cool sci-fi um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I did for Black History Month want to read a classic, which I never gotten to, um, which is I've chosen James Baldwin's Giovanni's Room. Not only is this a classic of black literature, it's also a very important foundational LGBTQ text. It's about, it's set in 1950s Paris and it's about um, a love triangle between a man and another woman and another man, um, which was, I think, like extremely, there were not a lot of books like this being published at that time. So this is both um, a classic of black literature and of queer literature and it's something I've been looking forward to reading for a long time. So that's one of the things I'm reading. Um, I also went ahead and bought some of the books that are being banned across Texas that I um, heard about and um, that I haven't read before or didn't already own. And one of those was New Kid by Jerry Craft. This is a Newbery Medal award-winning medal book, but it was recently banned out in Katy, which is a suburb west of here. Um, in sort of this and it's being banned just I'm sure in school districts all across Texas and it's just the story of a black kid who is transferred to a privileged mostly white um, prestigious college prep school and it's about his struggles to fit in and the racial elements there and that alone has made parents so uncomfortable that they're calling this book to be banned across the state so I really wanted to support um, one of these banned books that I didn't already have, and I picked this one. Um, I also thought given the length of my TBR this month, it would be nice to include a graphic novel. The last book I don't have yet because it's on pre-order, but it's just coming next week, and it's my friend Mariama Lockington's In the Key of Us. So this book, Mariama Lockington wrote For Black Girls Like Me, which is an incredible book and a must read definitely for anyone who's considering transracial adoption. Um, Mariama and I went to high school together, actually. We went to this arts high school called Interlochen. Um, I went just for my senior year. I'm not sure if Mariama went longer than that. A lot of kids did just go for their senior year or their junior senior year. Um, I only got to go for my senior year. But um, it was also in the summers, it was an arts camp. And um, the story is set in an arts camp that I'm guessing is kind of loosely based on Interlochen, where we both went. And it's about um, two black girls. They're two of the only girls of color in the entire camp. And um, they're both under a lot of pressure as, you know, aspiring high school musicians. I was a music major at that camp before I couldn't hack it as a, as a violinist. <laughs> 
and switch to writing when I applied to the high school program for my senior year I was trying to find any way to get out of the all-girls Catholic school that I was going to which as a atheist Jew was not like a comfortable place for me and um, so I applied to the writing program knowing I would not make it as a violinist anyways I'm really excited to revisit this camp um, through Mariama's eyes although I'm not again I'm not sure I'm sure it's, it's a fictional camp um, but I'm, I'm very excited. I always want to support Mariana's work. I'm so proud to know her and have been in workshops with her as a high schooler. And um, I'm just really excited for In the Key of Us. The other three books that I'm reading this month are like, I have to read them for other reasons. So the first one, which I'm currently reading, I'll be done with it soon. I don't want to talk about it too much, but it's my actually my only nonfiction book this month. It's What Happened to You? Conversations on Trauma, Resilience, and Healing. And this book is a conversation between Bruce D. Perry, who's a famous neuro, uh, neuroscientist, and Oprah Winfrey. Um, I'm already almost done with it. This was recommended to me by a therapist, uh, not my therapist, but one of the therapists of the people in my family. A number of people in my family, my nuclear family, have CPTSD from traumatic childhoods. I was lucky to have a decent enough childhood. I don't have CPTSD, although I, did. I have some medical PTSD. This book is such a great book, really for talking about any type of, tra type of trauma, because it's really talking about um, the neurological components behind it. Anyways, I'm talking about it too much, which I need to save for like my end of the month wrap up. But I have read other books on PTSD, like a number in the past. My spouse has PTSD from being in war. And um, he uh, went through treatment for that about eight years ago. And I read a lot about PTSD then. This book, I feel like, even though I've read a lot about it, I've been living with it for a long time. This book, I feel like I'm learning a lot, especially like in the more deep neuroscience-y stuff. And yet it's so easy to read because it's just a conversation and Oprah's there and Oprah's clarifying everything in the wonderful way that she has of communicating. So I highly recommend this book for... I was gonna say anyone with trauma or people who have loved ones with trauma, but I'm pretty sure that's everyone on earth. So yeah, I recommend this book. Um, okay, what else is on my TBR? Uh, next month, oh Jesus, Monday, it's only in three days. Okay, I need to finish that book real quick. And then I need to get started on Waiting for the Night Song by Julie Carrick Dalton because I'm on a panel uh, for AWP with Julie and Aya on Monday and I had meant to read Julie's book before the panel but originally we were going to go to the panel in person at in Phil at the conference in Philadelphia in March but then they then I didn't want to go because of Omicron everyone was feeling a little iffy about it so it ends up we're just doing the panel virtually I don't think I'm going to end up going to AWP in person at all and our recording date for our panel is Monday <laughs> So by Monday, I'm probably not going to be able to read all this, but I do want to read Julia's book because she's read my book and we're all on the panel together. I want to be able to reference some stuff. So I'm going to make a valiant effort to read as much as I can of this this weekend. The last book I'm reading this month is for my IRL book club of mostly teachers and librarians that I have here in Houston. And I did not pick this book, um, but it was my friend Katie's pick. And she picked Louise Erdrich's The Sentence. This came out last year. Um, Louise Erdrich is a author who's a member of the Chippewa tribe. And um, I've never read one of her books. This is set in, <laughs> it's set in Minneapolis last year. There's a blue jay going crazy outside. I don't know, oh, I shouldn't say crazy. There's a blue jay being obnoxious outside. Last time a whole bunch of blue jays were wilding out outside. I went outside and there was a giant red-tailed hawk in the branch, like right above me, like here. And it had a, a mockingbird. It had one claw, like on top of a dead mockingbird. And there was like feathers raining down like snow. Now the dog's going, something's happening out there. The blue jays always tell you about it first. And yeah, the, the hawk was just like staring at me and I stared at it for like two whole minutes. I was just like not moving because it was so cool. And then, and then the hawk flew off, taking its mockingbird with it in this like cloud of feathers that it left behind. It was so, so cool. Anyways, the blue jays told me about that. 
It's set in Minneapolis in a haunted bookstore. The bookstore owner or worker, a worker at the bookstore who just got out of jail is um, having to solve the mystery and read like a ton of murder mysteries in jail, I think. This is all just what I'm remembering from the synopsis. And it's set in Minneapolis last, uh, during 2020. So it's it has to do also with the reckoning of the George Floyd po protests and stuff. And I was flipping through it and it seems like there's attention to native issues as well and how those intersect with the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, so this was also not by a black author, like Waiting for the Night Song, but it is focused on George Floyd's murder and it's by an indigenous author. And I think this will also be really interesting to read this month. And again, I didn't pick it up, I'm reading it for my book club. So those are the seven books that I plan to read. It's probably not all gonna happen, but I want it to happen. I want to be able to read all these books. It'll probably be the most books I've ever read in a month if I get it done, so we'll see. Um, in author news, while I have you here, uh, you may have seen on Twitter, but I have amicably parted ways with my literary agent. Um, kind of just, you know, I'm shifting genres, I'm shifting focus. I had, you know, I'm really grateful to Mariah for all the work she did selling my YA trilogy to Cell Form Press. But now I'm kind of going in a different direction, focusing more on adult upmarket stuff. So I'm gonna be going back in the querying trenches soon. I'm actually looking forward to it. I've heard that querying the second time around is a much different experience. I have a lot more publications under my belt than before when I had nothing, <laughs> when I was querying my first book. Now I have one book out, another one coming out this year, two more under contract, over a dozen short stories in various outlets around the web. I have a journalism career as well. So I've like accomplished a lot in the last three years since I was querying last time. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this TBR video. Cheer me on for the end of the month. Tell me what you're reading. Are you participating in Blackathon? What books have you picked for that? And I'll see you next time. Bye.